Last time, we talked about wrists and about how internally rotating the wrists creates a more stable, mechanically functional platform on which to bear weight. For some people, this worked great. Took away the pain, had all kinds of range of motion, and a much better push-up. For other people, we found that internally rotating the wrists caused the elbows and shoulders also to internally rotate, and that didn't feel so stable, because it isn't. So today, we're going to talk about what happens next. What's the next step after you get a good internally rotating wrist? The short answer is an externally rotating shoulder and humerus, the upper arm bone. So first, we need a little warm-up to make you more, more aware of that. Take a hold of your elbow with your opposite hand, and then gently pull it in towards your center line. Not too hard, not too much. Push it back out. The goal at this point is not to strengthen or stretch anything, it's just to make yourself more aware of the way that this humerus, this upper arm bone, rotates. We know that it can adduct, we know that it can adduct, we know it goes up and down, but one of the things we often forget is that it turns. External rotation, internal rotation. The hand and forearm should be as relaxed as possible as you do this. There's no driving, there's no tension coming from uh, the lower arm. As a matter of fact, if you're the kind of person who has issues with things like carpal tunnel or even arthritis of the hands and fingers, this action can be quite soothing, allowing the wrist just to flop around a bit while the upper arm bone drives. Now, mechanically what's happening here is that when this upper arm bone curls under, it's drawing power from much, the much larger structures of the torso beneath it. This external rotation stimulates the rotator cuff. This external rotation also gets the tricep in line with the serratus anterior and the external oblique, allowing all of these things to work together. In a martial arts context, we use this all the time. A good punch, say in Wing Chun Kung Fu, requires a certain amount of external rotation so that you can fire a maximum amount of force outward. To kind of demonstrate what I mean by that, if I have this big punching bag here and I do a traditional kind of boxer's cross, I can get a full amount of power there. However, if I change my tactic rather from a cross style punch to a externally rotating fire out, it looks like this. And now the bag is way over there. So I can generate more power by being smart about my mechanics. Now, in a push-up context, I don't want that force to go away. I don't want to send it out. I want to keep it in. That's where the internally rotating wrist comes in. I externally rotate the arm. I extend. And at this point here, rather than punch out, I fold and internally rotate. Now, all of the force that I was sending away is now stored in a coiled elbow coiled elbow, and this can bear my weight much more effectively.